I have spent the last three years experimenting with almost every productivity and time management tip out there. There are five small daily habits, some evidence-backed and some of my own, that I now use to get the most out of my time and balance everything in my busy life. If you want my credentials, I'm currently working full-time with a two-hour commute. I write one newsletter and create one YouTube video each week. I exercise every day, eat well and get seven plus hours of sleep a night and still try and make as much time time as possible to do the things that I love, like seeing friends and reading and working on my personal development. The first habit is keeping and using a portable task list, and this saves me at least seven and a half hours a week. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I genuinely love public transport. It's literally a free pass or a $5 pass to getting where you want to go without having to do the driving yourself. I would say about 85% of people use this time to scroll on social media and 5% spend it playing games on their phone. If this is you, it's not your fault and it's what I used to do as well. It's because it's the path of least resistance. Scrolling and consuming social media content has turned into a norm every time that we are sitting on public transport, waiting in the car for our kid or our friend, or filling in time in between meetings and classes. I like to call these waiting times empty time. And there's something that the other 10 percent of people do with this empty time that allow them to make these small parts of their day more meaningful or more useful. They use something that I like to call portable tasks, whether they realize it or not. A portable task can be used in almost any situation where you have empty time. They typically involve things that require only your phone or your brain. They don't require deep concentration and they don't require large blocks of time. These portable tasks could be work related, they could be personal admin, or they could be related Related to your personal growth and development or even rest and relaxation. So every day I drive 15 minutes to the train station and then I take a 45 minute train to work. Instead of scrolling social media on these train rides, I've used the time to respond to messages, to create and edit content. I'm probably editing this YouTube video on the train right now. I've read and saved articles and posts that I wanted to explore more. I've even just sat on the train for 45 minutes and let my mind work through a current problem that I'm having or an idea that I've come up with. It might not sound like much, but let's do the maths. If I am taking the train for 45 minutes twice a day, five days a week, that equals 7.5 hours every week, an entire work day. This is one whole day that you get back to spend more time with your friends and family or get in that exercise that you can never find time for. It's time you can now use to do the needle moving work on your side hustle or hobbies. Or maybe it will just give you the opportunity for a bit more self care and relaxation time that will really help you to perform at your best. So some inspiration for other portable tasks that you could use. You could read a book or listen to a podcast. You could create your next workout program. You could clear out your overflowing camera roll or tidy up your home screen. And like I spoke about before, you could just use it to let your mind wander and just decompress from the day. If you do genuinely want social media time, because it is okay to be on social media, you could use this time for that intentionally. It's more just about eliminating the mindless scrolling. The key here is to have a constant list of portable tasks that you can pull from so you don't end up on the train or waiting for someone one and then spending all of that time deciding what to actually do with the time. So create your own portable task lists based on your interests, priorities and goals. What I do is I keep a master to-do list on Notion and this houses all of my different to-dos which I then pull from and time block into my days. So under this list I have a category section and one of those categories is portable tasks or phone I think it's called. So every time I'm in a situation where I only have my phone on me but I have a bit of spare time then I just sort this Notion database into phone tasks only and I pull things from there. If you want to make your own one of these lists then you can take the free Notion 101 course that I created which I'll pop in the description below. A small habit like this is something that contributes massively to a more balanced and fulfilling life by giving you time back and helping you to use your minutes more meaningfully. The second habit is eliminating small time wasters which could save you 4.37 hours per week. This is inspired by the weekly Apple screen time report which always makes me question what I am doing with my life. I went through a phase where I was racking up almost seven hours of screen time a day. Yes I was using my phone to create content and track my workouts and listen to things on Spotify but those things absolutely did not take me seven hours and I could never quite work out 
how it somehow got up to that amount because I wouldn't spend an hour straight scrolling on Instagram or TikTok. I started paying more attention to what I was actually doing with my phone and I came to realize that it was all these little five to 10 minute scrolls that somehow added up to hours each day. It was the ones where I would just finish a work stint and reward myself with a little scroll on my phone or where I didn't know what to do next and so I would procrastinate by scrolling on my phone. Even when I just got home from a long day and would just spend five minutes in the car before going inside, just doing a small scroll. They really don't feel like much, but all it takes is 10 of these little five minute scrolls to waste almost an hour of your day. And it's not just our phone that's the issue because these small time wasters are absolutely everywhere. Deciding what to eat for lunch or dinner can add up to 70 minutes a week. Going back and forth on what to wear each day can add up to 35 minutes a week. Looking for a closer park for 10 minutes instead of just parking 100 meters away and walking can add up to 70 minutes a week. And things like driving all the way home and then going back to the gym instead of just driving directly to the gym, eliminating that saves me 80 minutes a week. Once you become aware of these things, they start appearing absolutely everywhere. So the first step to getting your time back is to identify these time wasters. I did this just by starting to become aware of what I was doing as I went throughout the day. What are you doing repeatedly that you really don't need to? What things are taking extra time that you could eliminate? And how can you make the things that you do regularly slightly more efficient? Once you've gained this awareness, then you can start to implement strategies to reduce the time wasting. So for example, with my bad Instagram scrolling habit, I would just move the Instagram app on my home screen every week. This brought my conscious mind into the picture when I was trying to look for the app and gave me a moment to question whether I actually wanted to use it. Another thing that I do is meal prepping because this eliminates the decision making when I'm trying to work out what to eat for lunch and dinner. Another massive thing was creating a capsule wardrobe to make choosing my clothes each day so much simpler. So identify your time wasters, think about some different strategies that you could use to eliminate these or to reduce your bad habits and start giving yourself back the time to do more meaningful, fulfilling things. Habit number three is one of my absolute favorites and this is habit stacking, which has saved me at least five hours a week. If you feel like you don't have time for personal development or learning a new skill or exercising, or even just responding to messages, then this one is for you. Habit stacking has been the single biggest tool that I have used to prioritize my personal growth and learning while living an extremely busy life. There's a lot of different definitions for this, but my favorite way to explain this is combining a passive activity with an active one. Passive activities are normally physical ones, things like walking, doing the dishes, working out or meal prepping. Active activities are mental. So things like listening to a podcast, taking a phone call, writing or thinking about something. Now, multitasking on two passive or two active tasks doesn't work. You can't run and meal prep at the same time and you can't write an email and respond to a message at the same time. But habit stacking one of each of these does work. For example, I wrote the outline for this YouTube video while I was walking. I create content and respond to messages while I'm on the train. I listen to podcasts and audiobooks while I'm at the gym or meal prepping or washing the dishes. These are really simple activities that can solve the problem of feeling like you never have enough time in the day or having your personal growth always put in the do later pile. You are sitting right now with a portable device in your hands that you can do absolutely anything on. This makes habit stacking one of the easiest ways to implement more productivity into your life and manage your time better. So experiment with some different forms of habit stacking and work out which combinations work best for you and your goals. Habit number four is more of a mindset shift, but it's realizing that not all times are created equal. This is a big one. When I first realized this, my life completely changed and I have never looked at time, planning or productivity the same way again. I used to look at my mental capacity and focus as this straight line that stayed constant throughout the whole day. I thought that doing a task at 7 a.m. would take the same amount of time, feel just as difficult and be done to the same quality as if I did that task at 7 p.m. Turns out it doesn't quite work that way. 
Our bodies go through natural peaks and dips in concentration, energy, and focus throughout the day. These peaks and dips depend on our sleep and wake times, our chronotype, so whether you're an early bird or a night owl, as well as things like our habits and our lifestyle and the way that we look after our health. Realizing this made me start planning my day around not just my time, but also my energy and focus levels. I used to be a 5 a.m. morning gym girly. I would head to the gym before work get my workout done, go to work feeling great, and then come home, try and work on my side hustle or work on creating content and feel absolutely exhausted. I was an introvert spending all day talking. I was doing lots of mental work, even just having to pay attention to the way that I was holding myself and interacting with others. All of this just really took it out of me and I didn't have very much left at the end of the day in terms of my mental capacity. The main issue was that I was putting a task that energized me, my workouts, at the start of the day, a time where I was already high energy. I was then putting a task that took a lot of energy from me, my deep focused work, at the end of the day when my energy was already depleted. I had nothing left to give, I was just trying to pull from an empty cup and it was completely mismatched. So what I did was I started swapping these times. Instead of working out in the morning, I started heading into the city early and doing 90 minutes of my focused work before going to my full-time job. Then at the end of the day, after I'd used up all this mental energy and I had to commute all the way home, I would use up my physical energy by going to the gym or going for a walk, but I wouldn't do a task that required more mental energy that I didn't have. Understanding your unique patterns and energy fluctuations really comes down to self-awareness and experimentation. You can either track your energy and focus levels for a few days or just have a think about the times where you normally do your best work and try and dedicate those times to the work that produces the most value for you. I can guarantee you that when you start aligning your tasks with your energy levels, you will multiply the quality of work that you produce. It will take you less time and you'll find doing the work easier. You're genuinely making work feel more fun because you have more energy to give to it. So in summary, first work out your high value and low value times based on your energy and focus levels. Then work out your high and low value tasks based on how much energy and focus they require and how much they contribute to your goals. I spoke about deep and shallow work in one of my past videos. So go have a look at that if you want to know more about working out which type of work is the most important. Then all that's left to do is to match your times with your tasks. So put your low value tasks at your low value times and your high value tasks at your high value times. This is such a simple change, but when you start arranging your day based on your energy and focus levels and not just your time, you will get so much more out of your day and finish the day feeling so much better about the work that you've done. Habit number five is time blocking. Time blocking is a strategy Strategy that Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and Cal Newport, the author of Deep Work, all use to get the most out of their time. Most of us treat our tasks like ice. We think they're this solid block of work that take up a predefined amount of space. But in reality, your tasks are like water. They mold to fit the space that you put them in. So right now it's a Sunday and I'm filming this YouTube video. If I was to have blocked off the whole day to film this video, it would have taken me the whole day. I would have started procrastinating and focusing on things that didn't really matter. I would know that I'd have time to film it again and so I probably wouldn't do a very good job the first time. But the difference is that today I have also gone to the gym, I've meal prepped, I've grocery shopped, I've seen a friend, I've set aside time to read this afternoon. And so I don't have the whole day free. I don't have time to procrastinate on the video. This has meant that I am more intentional and productive with the one to two hours that I do have. This comes back to Parkinson's law. We will make tasks more complicated and be less efficient with our time just so that those tasks fill the time available for its completion. So I've given one to two hours to my task today. It's going to fill up that time. If I gave it a whole day, then it would fill up all of that time instead. When we time block, we reduce the negative effects of Parkinson's law by actively setting boundaries and creating self-defined deadlines to complete the task in. We basically pour water into a mold instead of all over 
of the floor. In a world where we are increasingly in charge of our time, where there is always a million things to do, and where our results are based less on the number of hours that we put in and more on the quality of those hours, implementing structure like this has never been more important. How do we actually time block? Well, it's pretty much as simple as it sounds. You take the task that you have to do, decide how long you have to allocate for it, and then you add it into your calendar. This pairs really well with habit number four about matching your tasks to your energy and focus levels. By not looking at just how much time the task will take, but also looking at how much energy it will require, you can decide the best time in the day to place a time block for that task. Now, this will take time to get right. You won't immediately know how long a certain task will take or how much you can actually get done in an hour. You might not know where your energy levels sit and when the best time to do certain types of work is. So my biggest suggestion is to just start with what you think and be realistic. Just because you want a task to only take one hour, it doesn't mean that you can squeeze a four hour task into one hour. It'll just create more stress and anxiety and really feelings of inadequacy when we then don't get it done. So start by setting a realistic period, reflect on how much time it actually took, and then start adjusting your times from there. Okay, I think there is a lot that we can take away from this video. The biggest thing is just don't expect yourself to implement all five of these habits at once, because that I can guarantee you is going to be impossible. I have built up these habits over years and a lot of experimentation has happened along the way. So what I would recommend is to start with just one of these action steps, and then when you've successfully added that habit in, then come back to the video and choose another one to add in. So action step one is to keep a list of portable tasks. Write down an area of your life where you can implement these portable tasks, whether that's on the train or waiting to pick someone up each day, and then create a space to keep your list of portable tasks that you can access easily. Again, if you want to create your list, you can use the Notion 101 course. Otherwise, you could just make something in your phone or even on a notepad that you take with you. For habit number two, identify three small time wasters that you're currently doing and create a strategy or multiple strategies to start reducing these time wasters. For habit number three, think about two things that you're currently doing that you could start implementing some form of habit stacking into and plan out exactly how you will do this. So if you want to start habit stacking on your drive to work, then work out exactly what podcast that you're going to listen to so that when the time comes around, implementing it becomes that much easier. For habit number four, identify your high and low value times. Do an audit of what you currently spend that time doing and start exploring where you could transfer more low value, shallow work tasks to lower value times. And habit number five, time blocking, set aside 15 to 30 minutes on a Friday afternoon or on the weekend to time block your week ahead. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you have any time-saving habits or you want to hold yourself accountable for the new habit that you're going to implement, drop them in the chat below so that we can all support each other and share our time management knowledge. I'll see you next video.